How tall are you? Um, I don't really know. How tall are you? <laughs> You're about five three. Now see, you would have been about the height of the average soldier in the American Revolution. You get to take the first. This is what they handled in the Revolution. This is a brown vest too. Right here is a crown for England. You have the tower because it came from the Tower of London. And you see where it says GR there? Mm -hmm. That's Latin for King George III. That is his official emblem and seal. Both the British and Americans use that because we're British citizens. So this is what both of us have, but that's a brown vest model too. All right, now here's the deal. That is accurate for about 30 yards. You used to all the guns we got today that'll go half a mile. That's good for about 30 yards. It takes you from 11 to 15 seconds to reload it. So a big old fat NFL lineman can go 40 yards in five or six seconds. You know, they're four point something. So if it's gonna take you 11 to 15 seconds to reload it and it's only good for 30 yards, you stand out there 40 yards. After they shoot at you and miss, you just come walking in on them and kill them. Wow. So that's where they would put the bayonet on so they would have a little bit of defense if they got charged in between time. Now, put it back on your shoulder and try to aim now. Oh. The reason these were only accurate to like 30, 40 yards because they didn't have the rifling. Um, to complicate things worse is because they were flint lock, um, and you guys have seen it where they cock it back and the flint strikes and it burns the powder, because there was a little powder ignition, as you aimed, you had to aim, but you couldn't really look at it when it went off because it would burn your eyes. And so you had to aim and either close your eyes or turn your head. Oh, wow. So not only is it only accurate for 30 or 40 yards, you don't even see what you're shooting and at after a while. And from the time you pull the trigger, it takes a little while to burn. It's slow burning powder. It's not high explosive. So it, it goes, you go click and it goes shh, poof. And so you got to turn your head away and, and hold. You know, it may not be the most historical approach, but anytime we pick up Revolutionary War muskets or hatchets or anything like that, I just cannot help but think of Benjamin Martin and the Patriot. Oh, oh. like the Patriot. Yeah. You know, we're a good family. You know, we're really peaceful. But then when we, you give us a hatchet, we're like, Benjamin Martin. That's a hatchet from the American Revolution. Wow. Wow. The, like this is this is actual. That, that this is, is actual. Real? Wow. Now the, the wood is not actual, but the hatches that part is actual. That is so cool. It's been fitted after that with with wood from some other era. So could Rhett pick one of your paintings in the in the room to practice on? Oh, yes. Could we try? Oh sure, no, yeah. No, we, no, we've got some rich <laughs> pictures upstairs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the Washington comes up on the Battle of Monmouth, and his guys are shooting the cannon at the British, and he was really ticked because as you shoot the cannon, see that. I mean, if that hits a British guy, it's going to kill him, but so will that little lead ball, you know? So why waste that? Hold it. So he showed us how to can. aim the cannon at the ground and make it hit the ground and go skipping through the British, and that would take out wow. seven or eight guys. Wow. So if you remember in the movie, yeah. the movie you saw yeah. the skipping cannonballs, and remember it took the guy's head off? Yeah. Exactly. That's, and so After walk, it had taken out a leg, a leg here. And that's all, yeah. right. Yeah, so you get multiple. So, and I mean, that thing is, that's heavy, heavy. It's, the density on that is, woo.